This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Bob B writes in the comments section, your new place is an echo chamber, a swimming pool. It needs softening. You have your work cut out for you. No doubt you will improve it. Thumbs up. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Dear John video where we discuss comments from the previous video which was exactly as Bob B describes and he's effectively echoing, see what I did there, what I said in my previous video about this new room that I have here in my new home in Lisbon and really the reverb problem that it has. It has a really bad reverb problem. And we saw in the last video that that reverb in the mid range of the treble where it really, really matters, I think, well, certainly for me anyway, is up to one second in length. So yeah, I have my work cut out for me. I need to sort it out <laughs> and yeah, I will get to it in time. As I said in the last video, I am going to have this room professionally treated with acoustic panels. That's happening in two days. So by the time this video goes out, that process will already be underway. Anyway, thank you ever so much to everybody who watched that video about this room or rather the, this room's yeah, acoustic problems. That video did 80,000 views in a couple of days. So I'm really happy with that in this video. I want to talk about your reaction to that video. Very meta, right? And Free Radical writes, you can hear how cold and sterile that room and decor is. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it on the microphone. I said so in the last video. It's obvious in this video. And then I think, how do you say this? Ola Yadi, Ola Yadi, I can't even say this. Ola Yadi Paris says, that sounds like a terrible room to listen to music in. Well, here's the thing. Yes, it is, but it will sound worse to you as a viewer hearing my voice reverberate around the room and then feed into this microphone than it does to me here. And there's a bit of science behind why this is. So basically, when you enter a reverberant room, what your brain subconsciously does is try to separate the the reflected sound from the direct sound and it can separate some of the reverb out so your brain effectively cancels some of it so me being here right now my brain is cancelling some of the reverb so that it's not too distracting for me but of course a microphone has no brain it's a dumb device and it cancels nothing so you hear all of it and obviously you're not in the room or in this room when you're listening to this video so your brain isn't going into that kind of subconscious overdrive to cancel out any reverb. Anyway, another comment. Yeah, it's on my tablet here. Somebody wrote a comment actually about how, oh yeah, nice product placement, John, as if I'm somehow sponsored by Microsoft. The absurdity of some of the stuff that some of you people write, it just beggars belief. Like, I, I don't know anybody in Microsoft. This is a Surface Book 2, or rather this is the tablet portion of a Surface Book 2, that I bought myself about four years ago. It's a discontinued model, and it's sort of groaning under the strain of a Windows 11 install, so it's not especially great right now. Okay, another comment, and this one from another name I can't pronounce. Is it Bla Blazeros, Amigos? I'm sorry, Blazeros, if I've butchered your name. He writes, sofa and small rug is not helping because you still have empty walls and all that bare tile. Too many hard surfaces. This is like a chapel. Try some organ music. Cheers. Yeah, he's right. But, well, he's right to a point in that the sofa and the rug don't not work because I've got bare walls. They just don't really work all that much. I'll try and put some data on the screen right now that shows the absorption coefficient of your average rug. It will improve it a bit, but it, even if this entire floor was carpeted, 
this room would still have significant reverb problems. Because, and that comes down to another comment from Alan Kirschbaum. And he writes, ceilings can be just as bad as floors. Each speaker reacts differently depending upon their dispersion characteristics. Yes, because if a, a, a speaker fires a lot of sound upwards, and they all do to varying degrees, the dispersion characteristics, the sound will go this way to the ceiling, this way to the floor. So if you think the floor is a problem, then you also must accept that the ceiling is a problem, which is why I keep crapping on like a broken record about how you really need to treat the ceiling. And in many ways, it's, it, it is more of a challenge and it is more expensive than putting rugs down and having other kind of like sofas and, and chairs. But I think it has the most pronounced effect on the reverb time in the mid-range of the treble in a room. He won't do anything for the bass though. Now Mark Gabor writes, have you considered treating the staircase? You might be getting a lot of reverb spilling back into the room from there. Yes, Mark, I have considered this, but this is a second or third step problem to solve, I think, because I don't know what's gonna happen with the treatments that go up on the walls and the ceiling in this room yet. Once I've kind of heard that, once I've measured that with Room EQ Wizard, then I might consider, basically I've got a hallway here that goes to a, a spare bathroom and then left to a kitchen, but immediately and then down leftwards, so it's not that way, it's that way downstairs, I've got steps going down and they're terracotta tiled steps. And I've got the same at the other end of the room going up. So I might consider having those treated down the line, but not straight away, you know, because it's a fairly large undertaking to have this room acoustically treated as it is, because I'm trying to squeak this video in before the sun goes down on a Tuesday afternoon. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to pack all this TV, speakers, Ikea Kallax, well, away and probably move it upstairs so that when Vicoustic come in, all I have here is a couch and, well, the rug will get rolled up. So all I have is a couch with a cover on it so we can work around and, yeah, start fitting panels. Sandish Candle writes, do you have neighbors? This is a good question, actually, because if you're gonna use a subwoofer or you're gonna play loud or you just play bass heavy music, as I do sometimes, you have to consider your neighbors. So below my floor here is a garage, my garage. So there's no issue with sound traveling downwards. Behind the front wall here, well, this is a gyp rock wall, and then behind that is the original stone masonry wall, I guess you'd call it. And I think behind that is a neighbor, but I've heard nothing so far. And I've played a bit of music and no one's complained. I only play at roughly 80 dB. So I'm not particularly obnoxious about it. Although we were out this afternoon and somebody was just belting it out of their house. So I think Portuguese people are a little bit more liberal with neighborhood noise than German people in the main. Please don't take offense of that. I'm just kind of relaying my experiences. Like, and I'm, just, I'm one of those people who doesn't want to hear anybody else. I really can't stand hearing footsteps upstairs. So yeah, above me here is my office. So I've got nobody upstairs. There is an apartment that way but I don't really have to worry about that because their lounge room is downstairs, so adjacent to the entry hall and then my garage. So I think I'm pretty good in terms of neighbor proximity. One of my patrons asks, his name's Animatone, or Animatone, he asks, how far apart are your speakers roughly? Looking good, otherwise excited for the new Lisbon backdrop for future videos. So the zoo speakers, I measured it this morning, from the tweeter to the tweeter, I think it's three meters 10 or 20. I've forgotten already, but it's over three meters because I wanted to have the bigger speakers with the greater distance. I think the zoos can breathe a little bit more. The book arts, if I put them three meters apart, the central image might begin to collapse. Maybe, I don't know. Russell Southie writes, Plants, John, you need plants. And I think what Russell is referring to is the April Fool's video that we made a couple of years ago where I was joking about how plants are very good sound absorbers and diffusers. And before anybody comments here going, they are, John, yes, they are, they are to a, a tiny degree in the uppermost frequencies. 
Basically, if you want to absorb sound, the lower the frequency, the more mass you need, the bigger bulk you need. So unless you've got an enormous plant that takes over maybe like a quarter of the volume of the room, it's not really gonna do much for the sound of your room. But I guess I can't anticipate the number of possible nitpickers and what about is who might come at me about that statement but i really have not found a significant difference and i from plants that is and i've loaded my room in berlin with plants and it just still sounds the same you know the acoustic treatments on the wall they made a significant difference and the ceiling but not the plants no mid mod audio rights love your channel i've learned so much from your videos they am looking forward to your treatment of the room I'm a little disappointed to hear you mention the word IKEA. I would have expected somebody with your knowledge and taste in high quality audio to consider furnishing your flat with something better. I imagine Lisbon has more than a few high quality modern furniture stores. Yes, okay, so there are several reasons why I've got IKEA here now. Number one is money. Like, I bought this apartment with the bank's help, I'm broke. I can't afford fancy furniture. I would love to have a USM Haller unit behind me here. That's German modular furniture. And I would love to have a fancier sofa, of course, but I can't afford it right now. So I just have to stick with the basics. The other reason I like IKEA is it's very kind of every man, it's relatable. The Kallax is always a useful piece of furniture to own. Like it's great as a sideboard here. I've got it on the, the metal riser that uh, IKEA now sell for it. And it's great for storing records. It's great for Kallax Fi, hi-fi units or hi-fi components that fit in the, the squares, but not full-size components, but they can go on top. So it's just a matter of practicality and finances right now. I mean, I might upgrade down the line, but I just don't foresee a time at this stage where I'm gonna be flush enough to go, right, now I'm gonna buy a whole new bunch of furniture. I'm sorry, I mean, I would love to go yeah, furniture shopping in, in Lisbon and be checking out some, you know, a three grand sofa. That would be great, but it's just not gonna happen right now. Eric Isabel writes with a fairly, <laughs> it's quite an interesting comment actually. He writes, as the French saying goes, a man with two houses loses his mind. And he's written the French here, qui a deux maisons perd la raison. Good luck trying to stay sane between two houses especially in two different countries, cheers. Yeah, it, it's possibly gonna be a challenge, but I like moving around, I really do. I'm just, I guess, one of those people who gets itchy feet, but I don't like to go on big extended six month trips or six month vacations. I like to move and live somewhere because you really can't know a place until you live there, I think for at least a year, but that's just my own interpretation of the world. You might feel differently. There's no need to at me about it, you know, like it's just, that's just my take on life really. And then the best of fools writes, this is a bit of a, well, this is clever wordplay. Actually, I like this. This is a, a good lol. He writes, you can name your new listening room, Listenbon. Now, if you're an English speaker, that's probably not gonna really make a lot of sense, but Germans call Lisbon, Lissabon. So Lissenbon is the next kind of step along, I think. I think, I think that's great. So I might, uh, I might adopt that, the best of fools. Thank you for that. Last comment for today comes from Mario Nahr, and he asks, why not use the Lingdorf TDAI 1120? That's a little bit of Kallax Fi made by Denmark's Lingdorf, which has room perfect, room correction software built in. And I love it, I think it's fantastic. But in deciding what gear to have shipped from Berlin to here, I didn't choose it. I went with the NAD M10 V2. I think the reason for that was because I've got a, a twin subwoofer video coming down the line. And I thought the NAD would be the better fit to run two subs off the back of that. But I could be wrong. But also the NAD is the more powerful unit. It's far more gutsy than the Lingdorf. So I thought it would work with a, a broader range of speakers than the Lingdorf because I had to make some tough choices when loading a van in Berlin. When did we do it? I think it was right at the start of January, two days before my eye decided it didn't want to play ball anymore. So it was only like a transit van. So I had to, yeah, I had to make some tough choices and 
The Lingdorf didn't make the cut, not because there's anything wrong with it, just because I'll use it when I get back to Berlin. Talking of which, actually, somebody wrote a comment this afternoon, a what about comment, he's a what abouter. He wrote, what about Olaf? Well, Olaf still lives in Berlin. I will be back in Berlin at the end of March to have the stitches out of my eye. I'll probably stay there for, I don't know how long, probably make a few videos with Olaf. Anyway, yeah, so like Olaf will be back with videos, yeah, possibly in a couple of months and we'll have a, a run of videos there and then I'll come back here and maybe do a run of videos here, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm trying to teach myself how to film myself. And in the last video, the background was too dark. So I've juiced the light here, even though the light outside is a bit gloomier today. So I'm hoping this one's gonna come out a little bit better, but we'll see what we can do. Olaf is still doing the color grades for me where he's available. So we'll see what happens with this one. But if you've got this far in this video, thank you very much. Please consider giving it a like down below. If you like my attitude, not just a hi-fi or high-end audio or portable audio, all the other things we cover on this channel, but also to responding to reader comments in this way. This is the best way I can do it, I think. It's the one that works best for me. Then please consider giving, <laughs> best for me, that's very selfish, isn't it? Then please consider giving this video a, give this video a subscribe. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching me the end of this video. Thanks for watching.